today a little bit about getting a great balance sound outside. Here's several techniques I'd like to share with you today. As you're starting to put your show on the field each year, probably the most important thing to get right is your balance. This is a great book that a lot of people reference. I'm not sure a lot of people read this book, but it's a great book. It talks about ratios and recipes to get great sounds. And I think as conductors, like he says, we need to be the chef. And I think we need to be like grandmother chefs, where we don't, there's not an exact recipe, where we know what we want it to sound like, taste like, if you take that analogy, there's not a recipe that works for every phrase, for every ensemble and every environment. If we take this analogy just another step forward, here's a recipe that on the left, it's a pretty traditional thing with the chocolate chips, the melody, if you get the analogy, is in the forefront. This, the one on the right, you, you get where that might be a problem. And I think that a lot of ensembles are playing with two cups of salt, okay? Uh, it really uh, hurts our effective communication with the audience when we play out of balance. Let's use these pyramids to start talking about balance. They aren't all Macbeths. This is a basic concept that we've been talking about with pyramids in Macbeth's book where it talks about the top of the pyramid being softer and the bottom of the pyramid being louder. Um, and it, his overall approach is a soprano alto tenor bass approach where the highest voices play softest and the bass voices play the loudest. Um, this, this applies to full ensembles, uh, it also applies to sub-choirs, like the clarinet choir, for example. Sopranos play the softest, the bass clarinets play the loudest. Even applies to individual sections, where the first trumpets would play softest and the third trumpets would play the loudest. As I listen and judge bands across the country, this next point and this next pyramid is the thing that I think people miss the most. The melody must be in the forefront. It is the thing we're trying to say. It's the subject of our musical sentence. And I think clarifying it and making it very obvious to the audience what they're supposed to listen to adds a lot of clarity uh, in, in our communication. So I suggest, let's say for example, you're going from set three to set four. Stand in set three or set four and stand still and play in the drill set. Have each part play separately. Have the melody play. Blend together any doublings and get that volume exactly loud, as loud as you would like for, for that phrase. Even work on the shaping within that melody. Then blend in the counter melody. There's a conversation. Get those volumes where you want it. And then get in, in the background the backup singers, the accompaniment, the group, and make sure that you get the balance you want. And then it, as we add feet to it, the, going from set three to four shouldn't change the sound that much, and you can work for a consistent balance throughout the phrase. Here's another important pyramid to consider, where the back of the field is louder than the front of the field. This is what it looks like on the field. And I would suggest another step of the process at some point is to have the back of the field, the mid part of the field, and the front of the field. And what's critical is that the front of the field listens back and blends with the sound they hear coming from behind them. We've all seen the, the band where the trumpets were staged down front, weren't listening to what was coming behind them, particularly the strongest performer of the trumpet section, and that individual sticks out. By listening back, we can alleviate that problem. So this next pyramid's a little more controversial, I think. People have different opinions about this, but at the end of the day, when we're in widespread forms, we really must have the people in the extremities, really extreme widespread forms I'm talking about, back off a little bit, okay? And this is going to really depend on the strength of the players and the maturity of the ensemble, but it's important that we do consider this and uh, have a factor in what, of how we approach balance. Another important consideration is elements within the field, okay? And, you know, in concert band, a lot of people talk about balancing trios around the concert band. Well, you can see in these examples of some different dynamics above the heads of different performers. I think we all have dealt with this where we have strong players and weak players. Some players can play really much stronger and carry on the field. And that, like the dynamics we represent is that a lot of performers are performing at a much softer level. And this is one of the things you can work on mid to late season when the younger performers are getting more comfortable playing, marching and playing. And so getting a consistent sound within each visual element will help it so you don't have individuals sticking out of the ensemble. Another really critical part of getting a good balance is where you listen to your ensemble from. This first example is not an ideal place to make pit comments from. You're standing on top of them. The next one's a little bit better, obviously, but still not ideal. I think it's important that we understand your proximity to the ensemble. Try to get back as far as possible. When and if you get stadium time, 
it becomes a balanced rehearsal. I see a lot of people make the mistake of it becoming a visual rehearsal. You need to, you don't get that opportunity to listen this far back from the judges and audience uh, perspectives. And I would take time to build each phrase again, like we've spoken about, to get the desired effect that you want. Another really important thing to consider is the fundamental character of the instrument. So for example, clarinets don't carry that great outside. And so it, they might be marked piano, but you have to have them play fortissimo. So it's really important to consider that. It's also sort of a waste of time to spend a lot of time balancing your ensemble inside. It's good to get your students to listen and always react to their environment, but your actual volume people play outside will really be, have so many factors that we've been talking about. So don't spend lots of time, okay? And I always say this, but if it doesn't sound great inside, it's not gonna sound great outside. Don't put the music on the field too soon. Every phrase will need a different recipe. If you haven't read the Macbeth book, please make sure that you do so. It's, it's a treasure. I learn a lot every time I read it. Hope this has been helpful today. This is John Finn from Phantom Musical Productions.